If you had a championship horse, you wouldn't feed it alcohol, processed foods, and overwork him every day, right? But if you had to, you would choose your life over the life of your stallion. People treat their pets better than they treat themselves. Mm-hmm. Regular checkups, you walk every day, you get fresh water, yeah. food, organic stuff, and then you eat garbage. Right? Alright. If you had to use just one strategy, if I if you forgot, if my computer broke down right now, and you guys forgot everything I see tonight, unless there's some underlying health risks, never eat carbohydrates for breakfast. If a, if a politician or a a politician or um, uh, a leader of a country met me in an elevator and asked me what I would suggest to change the effects of the, the, the obesity and the, and the weight gain, I would choose this. Right? Instead, choose a protein and a fat source. Now, why do I say this? Um, I'll get to that in a couple of the slides. Let's keep it moving. Alright, so we're going to go right into the weight loss laws. I have some laws that you're going to have to um, abide by. And when I do this, the signals to take notes, okay? Yeah. When I do this, you just write. Alright? <laughs> weight loss law number one. Hydration is essential for nutrient absorption and all the other metabolic processes of the body. The body cannot adapt to dehydration. Alright? So water intake. Optimize your hydration. According to the NASM, which is the National Academy of Sports Medicine, we're going to need, it will be known as the NASM from now. Sedentary men should consume an average 13 cups daily. Eight ounce cups. Sedentary women should consume an average nine cups. That's the minimum. Those participating in a fat loss program should drink an additional eight ounces of water for every 25 pounds they carry over their ideal weight. Studies have shown that fluid loss, as little as two percent of body weight, will have adverse effects on the body. Right? We need to make sure we take into account if an individual is going to be exercising in hot climate, like summer, for instance, um, or exercising briefly, the water intake will need to be higher. Right? Now here are guidelines set forth by the NASM. Consume 14 to 22 ounces of fluid before exercise. Drink 6 to 12 ounces of fluid for every 15 to 20 minutes of exercise. And if exercise exceeds 60 minutes, which I'm pretty sure you guys are not going to go over an hour. I don't have a single training session that goes over an hour, unless it's an athletic event. Use a sports drink containing electrolytes and some carbohydrates to replace both fluid loss and decrease muscle glycogen stores. Now, electrolytes, potassium, sodium, magnesium. They tell the body what to do with water. So if you want to drink water all day, and you go to the bathroom every hour. You can't wait to get to the next bathroom. Mm-hmm. But when you, when you ingest water with the electrolytes, it signals where the water is going to be stored. Intracellularly, mm-hmm. extracellularly, it's not, you're not going to pee it out. Um, mm-hmm. And it also, you know, electrolyte, electrolytes help for muscular contraction. It stops cramping and all the other stuff that you guys would probably mm-hmm. have heard before. Muscle glycogen stores. Now, the 8% carbohydrates, um, it's not a rule of a thumb. You see the goal when somebody just starts exercising, they may run out of fuel faster. So it's good to have this on hand, the carbohydrate pad on hand, just in case you start getting lightheaded and dizzy. Now, disclaimer, if somebody gets lightheaded and dizzy while exercising, it may not be because of low blood sugar. As we have a nurse in here, it could be other serious health risks. Mm -hmm. So just make sure and have like a little bit of sugar close by. If you get lightheaded, you can try that. And at the end of a session, consult your physician because we have encountered more serious health complications mm-hmm. from just being like at any workout besides being an energy deficit. All right? Good. Weight loss law number two. Avoid foods that causes inflammation because they elevate cortisol levels. Processed meats, hot dogs, cold cuts, dairy products. Mm-hmm. Big, 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 big thing. <laughs> Refined sugar, sodas, candy, Refined sugar. and oh, simple geez. carbohydrates. I'm looking around the table. Who's is that right there? What's that? What is it? It's a Ripple Nutrition Vanilla Protein Chain. Oh boy, how much sugar does it have in it? Um, nine. Nine grams of sugar. All right. The best. Also, do not consume food from GMO sources. 
Yeah. Best disguised ones are bananas and sea. Let's grip some. You guys, I'm Caribbean. Anybody here from the Caribbean too? Nobody? Mm -hmm. Right. When you go to the Caribbean, you get a banana that's grown outside. Mm -hmm. You have to, the seeds in it. Yeah. In a banana. Banana has seeds that you spit out. Mm -hmm. Right? So when you get a banana here and it has no seeds in it, you know that something is wrong. Now, how does a fruit uh, carry on its species? How does anything carry on its species? By a seed. Correct? So if there's no seed in it, then how it's gonna, somebody has to do the fixing of it to, for the carry on. You guys get that? Awesome. Now, some veggies may also cause an inflammatory response, response sorry, which most refer to as bloating. Now, inflammation could be a topic for another hour or two hours. This is very, very serious. There's one doctor, if he has cook something, he cites that inflammation is the cause of most modern day disorders. Talking about heart disease, cancer, but we know from um, arthritis, all that other stuff, inflammation really doesn't number on your body. Because what happens is that when you eat these food, that these foods are processed, when you ingest it, the body has the T cells, right? That's the fighter cells to fight for and invade us. What the body T cells does, it starts attacking the food that we eat. So we are actually making ourselves more susceptible to becoming sick by eating bad food because we're using our immune system that is used to stand guard and the food that we're eating is the, the, our, our own immune, immune system is attacking ourselves, all right? So normally sometimes you see somebody sick, um, get cold, get cold really easily. The foods that they eat can be causing that. Because now the immune system is spread out, spread out thin. Got it? Mm -hmm. Alright, moving forward. Covered inflammation. Prostate is your body's white cells and the substances they produce protect us from infection with foreign organisms such as bacteria and viruses. Does inflammation affect health and hinders your ability to lose weight? Hell's yeah. Alright? <laughs> I'm going to choose so I can get back to that, right? <laughs> um, how do I tell if I'm experiencing chronic inflammation, fatigue, joint pain, abdominal pain, and if you tend to get sick easily? This, by, this list has been shortened by about 15 other different things. Mm -hmm. But this, these are the most common. It's joint pain, arthritis, fatigue, mm -hmm. and if you catch the cold really easily. All right? Number three, weight loss law, the third one. Go to bed and wake up the same time every day. We don't live in a perfect world, but by standardizing your sleep and wake times, ensures that the human circadian biological clock is uninterrupted, which optimizes neurotransmitter activity. Now, this is a whole bunch of like Java, all right? So let's break this down. In the morning, right, when you awake, after 45 minutes of waking up, cortisol output is double. Now we know cortisol causes belly fat, right? Cortisol has a bad connotation. But without cortisol, we don't get that drive to get up in the morning. So upon waking, 45 minutes after the body doubles up cortisol output, then the body produces dopamine. Now this is such a primitive uh, mechanism. This is what we used to use tens of thousands of years ago to get up in the morning and hunt for food. This is what caused man to not starve, all right? When you wake up, when you change your sleep and your wake times, this cortisol awakening response is affected. And hence your day tends to get a little sluggish. So when you wake up on a Sunday a little later, how does Sunday feel compared to Monday? Try that experiment. When you wake up late on a Sunday or a Saturday, how do you feel as compared to waking up on a Monday or Tuesday morning? Your neurotransmitter your activity, your cortisol output is totally different, it's screwed up. All right? So, if you want to sleep, if you don't want to sleep in on weekends, take a power nap. They do not affect your circadian rhythm negatively, but do decrease the stress levels and improve productivity. Research indicates that a compromised circadian rhythm is linked to metabolic disorders such as obesity and diabetes. And we could tie one very important thing that's not on this slide. It's get the televisions out of your bedroom. Get out of your bedroom. 
That blue light stimulates brain activity up to four hours after exposure. My entire team at night, we train in blue light blocking glasses. And it looks pretty cool. It looks like what you have in the video. Blue light blocking glasses right there. <laughs> but what that does, it, it reduces macular degeneration. And when your, your brain is turned on for four hours after exposure, you can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And now what that does, it spikes cortisol. And cortisol is supposed to be high in the morning and low at night. So if you can't sleep at night and you're experiencing serious um, sleeplessness, it may be because cortisol is spiked at night. Mm -hmm. So you might be sluggish in the day, your circadian rhythm might be reversed. Now, uh, you know, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention to it, okay? Is there um, something you can eat or drink to reverse it? It's a cardiac rhythm, you gotta reset it. So you see, uh, cortisol responds to light. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up in the morning, the light is bright, yeah. cortisol is heightened. At night, what you can do is start dimming the lights in your house and cut off uh, exposure to blue light probably about two or three hours before bedtime. No, we don't live in a perfect world. We work late and become late. Sometimes you want to unwind with a little bit of TV. Sometimes I want to get my head around some dumb stuff too, all right? The blue light blocking glasses would definitely take care of that. Of course, you know when on your phone, like this is, this, you're going to sleep on your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Bang, right? So you, you're exposed to that blue light all the time. So blue light blocking glasses is effective. When I have my challenges and I have my clients try to cut their, 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 their um, their cell phones off before bedtime it wasn't working. They won't they won't come by. So that's why we did the research and we found the glasses that helped fix that. So you just lay in a bed with the blue glasses on? The, the light so as soon as let's say it knows winter, right? So the sun sets at what five? Yeah. It's happening on the five. Uh -huh. And it looks it, it, you could get a prescription. It looks like what she has is this fashion of this cool. You just don't know. You know it's, yeah. Right? I could also I could also send a link you guys to check it out. Alright. Pro tip. Alright, number four. Your dinner must be fully your dinner must fully digest before you go to bed. You don't want to go to bed with a full stomach. Gas in your car at night will be gas in the morning. Excess food in your stomach at night may make you sluggish and potentially be stored as fat in the morning. Now again, I'm providing solutions for working people because I work late myself, all right? If you must eat late at night, consume a small portion of proteins and veggies. If you have time, take a short, brisk 10 to 15 minute walk after dinner to help with digestion. Five minutes one way, five minutes back. That's gonna help um, speed up digestion and it's gonna reduce the load that your body has to carry overnight. All right? Number five, for even faster fat loss, absolutely ladies, no alcohol, all right? <laughs> if you must, reserve your alcohol intake for special events only. It's muscle wasting and insulin spiking. Insulin is referred to as the hormone of aging or the aging hormone. Control it to get leaner, look younger, and live longer. There was a, a, a African American lady that hadn't had sugar um, in about thirty years, and she was on YouTube or Facebook. If you guys ever saw it, her husband is like this, and she's like well in her eighties, and she looks about sixty years old. Her skin is tight. I'm like, wow. And she said she never had sugar for 30 years. Now I know that's very extreme. It's probably like one in a thousand people do that. But is honey okay? Pardon? Is honey? Fructose. It's mm -hmm. the, the, the yeah. The sugar is sugar is sugar. It doesn't make a difference where it comes from. High fructose corn syrup, table sugar, honey. Again, we're not going to eliminate sugar altogether, but we're going to greatly reduce it. Okay. Right? We just going to start dropping it down. Now, uh, alcohol, what does alcohol do? So alcohol is a toxin, because you can't get alcohol poisoning. So when a toxin enters the body, what does the body do? Shuts down all the other metabolic processes to deal and remove the toxin out of the system. So if you're trying to lose weight and look cute, and you start drinking, then the body doesn't care about dropping fat or building muscle. The body's gonna deal with the alcohol first, to remove the alcohol first. It's like a bodybuilder's worst thing ever. Don't do alcohol at all, period. All right? So, we're going to start moving forward into the actionable steps, right? We're going to plan ahead. And you guys have heard this a uh, hundred times. You're going to hear it again. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. I want you to think right now about what your day or week is like. Do you get up early to go to work or school? Do you have kids? Are you retired? 
these factors will rightfully dominate your day. But if you don't find the time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your sickness. Mm -hmm. This is probably one of the best sayings I've ever heard in fitness because it's true. Everybody, the number one reason why people don't show up is because they don't have time. But that says it all. All right? Consider the following two proactive strategies. Oh, it should have been three. Oh, oh boy. Typo there. You guys didn't see that. All right? Set aside a day of the week to meal prep. Okay? Meals cooked on a Sunday are good for about five days. This is also the time to spend time with your partner and family and get the rest of the family involved. When you eat better, your kids eat better too. Everybody eats better, all right? I'm surprised to see how, uh, I asked some of my, my clients, I'm like, you guys eat well, but still feeding kids junk. Like, that does not make sense. They're gonna grow up wanting the same thing that you had and end up in your same problem, right? You wanna send them to the best colleges, the best schools, but you wanna feed them garbage food? It makes sense, doesn't it? Keep healthy, keep healthy snacks. Not seeds, yogurt, seasonal fruit in moderation. Seasonal fruit, guys. This is a big, 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 big thing here. Keyword seasonal. At your desk or in your bag for those high pressure jobs, for those with high pressure jobs, sorry, who don't always have time to eat. Failure to do this will result in binge eating late at night. I just heard somebody said they eat chips, <laughs> could eat a night. Oh, that was tough at night. I'm sitting there on my phone and I'm like, all right, this is going on. So, I know who he was. <laughs> let's, 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 let's touch on that a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. No, are you very busy during the day? I take care of a two year old. Take care of a two year old. So, at night, what you probably experience one, if you hadn't had your meals in for the day and you start calming down, you're like, oh, I'm hungry. So, you start realizing all the food that you miss, you're really hungry yeah. at night. Two, so, if you are stressed, from your day, yeah. which we all have our quarters on, right? At night, you want to eat something sweet. And comforting. Right, so what, how does that provide comfort? Insulin and cortisol have an inverse relationship in the bloodstream. You spike insulin, cortisol goes down. Now cortisol is that hormone that makes you feel yucky, like, ugh, I'm yucky. <laughs> but insulin, sugar, dopamine receptors, the brain reward centers, makes you feel awesome. Yeah. So you start feeling yucky, you take some sweet, you feel good for a minute. Yes. Then you feel yucky again and the cycle continues. And then, you know, problem starts happening. All right? Number three, keep junk food out of the house. Mm -hmm. If it's not in the house, you're not gonna eat it. I don't think you can leave 10 o'clock at night to go to 7-Eleven and buy some cookies, right? You won't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> cookies, I'm not picking on you. I'm bringing up because it's cookies, you know? All right. <laughs> Yeah, that could be a better option. You gotta watch these protein. You gotta watch them. Though. I know. The I know. Some you gotta watch them candy. because they they put low sugar and then they use the artificial the artificial sweeteners. No, the isosulfin K and the uh, the other stuff. What that does, big picture, it starts damaging what is called the microbiome in the stomach. So your stomach has this like gut flora. You know, say something is good for your stomach, right? Your stomach has these this internal uh, ecosystem of its own, right? Mm -hmm. And when we, when they substitute the take on sugar, so listen, this is not gonna have any calories, but this chemical is gonna damage the stomach. And it's very evident, I don't wanna go too deep, but if there's a link to high crime and high sugar consumption. Mm -hmm. If you look at what they put in black communities, <laughs> If you look at what they put in black communities, what's on the shelf in the delis and the bodegas, this is, I don't know if it's by design or if it's by guess, but I can tell you. Right. Um, stevia, is, is that good? Is that... Stevia is not bad, again, everything in moderation. Um, stevia is natural, so the body processes it. Um, but I would opt, if I were to choose between having some fake sugars, I would um, opt for having real sugar. As yeah. opposed to fake. Yeah. 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 yeah, it damages your microbiome. It's like antibiotics. You take antibiotics, you're done. The stomach is done for about six months. So, CBS, right? No, CBS, good. It's natural. Okay, I thought we got Yeah, me too. Uh, did I finish it? Yeah. Um, how do it? Your environment. 
whenever possible, avoid plastic bottles and Tupperware. Mm -hmm. I know it's all over, right? Ooh. I'm gonna drink some plastic bottle yeah. water right now too. <laughs> um, plastic contains xenoestrogens that mm -hmm. can bind to estrogen receptors causing hormone imbalances in both men, women, and children. Now, xenoestrogens are like fake estrogens. So you have the estrogen receptors, and estrogen binds to it, and it makes you a lady. And men have estrogen receptors as well. But when these things bind to the estrogen receptors, then free estrogen is hanging around in your bloodstream. Right? When free estrogen hangs around in your bloodstream, and the hormones don't do what they're supposed to do, we start developing hormonal imbalances. And then you run the risk of developing like estrogen-related diseases, like you know, cancer, uh, breast cancer, cervical cancer, stuff like that. Um, Always whole and never processed, number six. This goes for both animal and 100% plant-based food. We've been hearing about this plant-based thing. It's all over. They're selling this thing to us. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand this. The Beyond Burger is delicious. And then, that's what I've been told. I never had it. And I'm, I'm going to lie. Um, but a Beyond Burger contains a lot of things in it. So what's the difference between sausage that's processed and a Beyond Burger that's plant-based. Mm. Want to just process meat, want to just process plant. And now they gotta make it taste like meat. So how? what about all the additives that they need to yeah. put in this thing yeah. to make it taste like meat, right? Yeah. So process is process. Doesn't make a difference if it's plant or animals, okay? All right, how much should I eat? Portion control. All right, I'm gonna give me some quick Little tips right here. Drink an eight ounce glass of water before your meal, except those with acid reflux. Why not those with acid reflux? You see, what we consider as too much stomach acid, more than likely, is low stomach acid. Right? So when we treat an acid reflux, we should be trying to boost, more than likely, for the majority of people, we should be trying to boost acid in the stomach. Right? I've went through stomach issues and I started treating it. I'm like, this is not working. Until I started consuming apple cider vinegar, especially before eating proteins. Because I was I was looking out and my body was breaking on like what's going on. And every time I ate protein or I had a shake, I was like, Ugh. it's coming up. And after doing some research, I figured out that my stomach, my acid was low. I didn't go get a test, I just started taking some apple cider vinegar prior to the meals, and then boom, all of a sudden, I'm processing um, protein there. All right? Mm -hmm. So, if you have acid reflux and you drink a lot of water, it comes up. Like when you drink a lot of water, a lot of water, it dilutes the acid even further. All right? So, you don't want to dilute the acid even further. All right? What this 8 ounce glass of water is going to do, it's going to keep you a little full, so you start eating. That satiety mechanism is going to kick in, right? Because we have mechanical and chemical satiety mechanisms, right? Prepare your own meals. That is one of the best way to control your portions. Serving so sizes are too large, people. You know, you, you're too large. You go to eat in other countries, you vacation to other countries, you see what they give you to eat. Oh, yeah, it's like too much food, all right? Now, for visual learners, protein should be the size of your fist, so make your fist, right? That's your proteins, right? Carbohydrates, a third of the fist, so that's like a little right here. And fats around two tablespoons. Guys, fats are not the villains. The guy who designed the food pyramid got it all wrong, he did it by guess. And when it was printed, I could send you the research to show these things. Um, everything I, I put up here, I have the research back up. When he did it, I realized it was wrong because they had lobbyists for the corn and the wheat industry and the cereal industry that were pushing the money in that direction, right? And when he realized it was wrong, it was wrongfully designed, it was already too late. It was printed, it was in schools, it was in the curriculum, and that was that. So the food permit should have been the other way around. Carbohydrates should not be the biggest portion of the food, should be proteins. And in the ketogenic diet, it's fats on top. Carbohydrates should be the lowest thing you consume. 
right? Smallest thing on your plate, okay? Um, using step three, weigh, that's what we need, my bad. Weigh or measure your food to acquire your numbers. Guys, I have, I'm gonna skip to my bonuses. I put some bonuses in for you tonight. Some downloads and some stuff you could start putting together. When I'm teaching meal prep and meal planning, everything is done by numbers and calculation. As I said to you, the little education that you're gonna get, once you start playing with it, once you start playing with your numbers, you can look at your food and know exactly what it's worth. All you gotta do is measure a couple times. So you're not gonna measure every single time. If you set your top away to match what you eat, what you measure, once you buy your top away and you put it boom, 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 you don't know what you're gonna do for the day ready. You don't need to measure all the time, okay? So you gotta make it a habit, right? And number five, eat until you are satisfied. Just eat until you're satisfied. Right? Four very popular health and fitness myths debunked. Eat smaller, more frequent meals. How many times do you have food that? How many times do you get that? This is the biggest garbage that's out there right now. Why do why, why you think it's stupid? No guesses. Everybody shy tonight. Alright, number one. When you eat, the body produces insulin, correct? You know, insulin is designed to take sugar, put it in the muscle or puts it in the fat tissue or depogenesis, sources of glycogen. But when insulin is released, insulin is not released like, like this. Insulin is released like this, it's pulsating. So just imagine, you're eating at breakfast, seven o'clock, insulin is released. You're eating at 10 30, insulin is released. You're eating at 12, insulin is being released. You're eating, you're having a snack at three, insulin is being released. Your body's constantly producing insulin all day. And that is what is gonna cause insulin resistance, all right? So when we were back in the day when we said we had three square meals a day, three square meals a day, guys. If you need to, if your day is long and you need to get one snack in, get one snack in if you have to. If you can eat two, eat two. You wanna make sure that the body is not producing insulin as your hormone of storage. It is going to store. That is how we evolved, okay? Number two. Do cardio for weight loss. Myth. I teach anti-cardio. All my girls who you see up there in the, in the slide, they got skinny because we lifted weights. All right? Mm -hmm. Yes, cardiovascular training has a place, but it's not your primary fat loss too. Not your primary. It's probably number three or four on mm -hmm. the list. All right? Strength training makes you bulky. Which one of these women I showed you guys earlier? look like this. None. None. They're all this big. They're tight. Alright? For those of you a little coming a little later, just go back up. But strength training does not make you bulky. Women don't have that. I won't say you don't have it. The women who look like this take things to make them look like that. Right? You guys naturally have smaller waist, bigger hips and more feminine. So when you start training, you just look at it like a tighter, slimmer version of yourself. That's it. Alright? And fat makes you fat garbage. Garbage. Right? Sugar makes you hungry. Carbohydrates make you fat. Polyunsaturated fat makes you inflamed. Right? Fat doesn't make you fat. Fat is not the enemy. You should not eat carbohydrates. It's What's a good fat? Good fat. Olive oil, uh, avocado, mm -hmm. nuts, seeds. Um, I have all those things in the download, so you can look at all that, you guys can have all that information. Tonight, this, this session is just to give you guys a general overview on how we do things. Alright, special bonus gifts for you guys. I have a download for you guys, you guys will click and have all these things in your inbox, right? Mm -hmm. 32 guilt G that was a little bad right there. Alright? <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't see that, alright? Um, guilt free recipes, rule it. Three recipes, all right? 42 fat burning meals. These are all recipes and plans and downloadable books that I have for you guys tonight, okay? Healthy kitchen blueprint. Stuff you would need to make sure that you can meal prep. Your Tupperware, your skin, your this, your that, your the other, all right? Our very fast and easy meal prep videos. We did a 12 week challenge and there's a 10 minute video attached. To the challenge teaching you guys how to cook you get a crock pot you get the oven 
One of my trainers did it. She went and did a load of laundry. Stuff was cooking, cut back, meals were prepped done. Bang. Simple as that. 10 minutes. Chop up some chicken, chop up some peppers, marinate it in the oven fast. Healthy eating is not, is not crazy. All right? Um, there was some other slide here. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, no, um, I want to get some questions. Question and answer. Go ahead. I don't know if you went over this, um, but I'm being told, like, if I, there was one time that I wanted to get blood, but my iron was too low. Mm -hmm. So I was told to eat broccoli and a lot of greens for the whole week. Mm -hmm. And then when I told my mom, she looked at me like I was crazy and asked me who, I, who told me that. And I said, nurse. So what do you think about that? No, that's, um, I, I can give you medical advice, but that's not incorrect. That's it's not, not, it's not incorrect. That's correct. Questions. You guys must have some questions. Go ahead. What seasonings did you use? Like, you didn't use well, I'm, well, I'm Caribbean. So I use everything that's crazy spicy and hot. Number one thing I use is cilantro. Yeah. All right. Cilantro. I do thyme. Um, cilantro, thyme. Uh, all the other things are parsley, basil, garlic, tons of habaneros, pimentos. I make one by myself fresh. And I um, put it in the blender. Blend it up, chop it up a little bit. You don't want to blend, you don't want to puree. Because what I was taught, is that when you puree it, it doesn't get into the meat faster. When it's chopped, it works better. The flavor gets into the meat a little better. Mm. Um, and also, spicy food also, that, that mm. thermogenic effect, it helps you burn fat better too. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I always up for the fresh season. I do a lot of ginger too. Ginger is very, very, very important. It's good for inflammation. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, a couple of things that we don't have on here, is um, one slide that I didn't have is supplementation. Mm -hmm. You guys see a lot of that popping up all over, like vitamin yeah. shop and GNC. And you guys are gonna need some type of supplementation sooner or sooner or later. Alright? Um now any vegans in here? No vegans? I'm vegetarian. Vegetarian. I'm so uh, it's kinda like four different categories. <laughs> so you don't eat meat? You eat eggs? eggs? No. No eggs? Milk, cheese, stuff like that, nothing like that? No. So you're vegan, milk. vegan? Almond milk. Almond milk. Um, I recently got the almond milk um, yogurt. Okay. They're trying to like, get the protein in. My thing is like the protein. When you say, when you say protein for breakfast, I was like, protein. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very it's, um, it's like, tricky. Yeah. Very tricky. So the thing with, the thing with a, a plant-based diet is that the proteins always accompany the carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And the carbohydrates accompany fiber. You know, fiber is great, right? We need fiber. However, fiber blocks the absorption of nutrients. Fiber doesn't choose to block the absorption of fat, or fiber blocks whatever it blocks. Mm -hmm. So when it starts blocking carbohydrates, it might block some of the protein as well. So um, for a, a vegan, or vegetarian mm -hmm. who doesn't eat meat, you're gonna have a, I wanna say, a more difficult time putting it together. You're gonna be, um, you gotta watch your B12 levels, yes. right? You might be deficient in um, different stuff like carnosine, uh, stuff that repairs your joints, your ligaments. Um, and you also gotta make sure that you have a lot of amino acids in your bloodstream because the vegans have been shown by toxicity levels. Because of the B12 deficiency and the amino acid, the, the, the diets are a little more devoid of amino acids as opposed to meat eaters. Mm -hmm. So you just gotta make sure and watch your, your B12 and um, you know, some of the micronutrients. Uh, yeah, there's a list of like 26 nutrients that vegans are deficient in, but more so your B12. Mm -hmm. All right, just be careful for that. Um, any more questions? Go ahead. Is that like the um, keto diet? Because it says it's fat and then fat and. Alright, uh, what's, what's the keto diet? Um, I know very little of mm -hmm. it, but it seems from what I read, that's like what it says. That it says you gotta have a lot of fat, right. protein, you know, that you gotta measure it. Right, so one thing the keto diet is 70% 
fat, 75% fat, 20% protein, and 5-10% carbohydrate. Now the keto, the keto diet, um, the fat helps produce, when you start going to ketosis, two primary ketones, um, beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, right, produces in the liver. The keto diet was originally designed to treat kids with seizures, right? And then you saw these kids were getting all lean and jacked up. They're like, all right, we're going to try this for adults, all right? The keto diet is good for inflammation. So if you have any joint pain, I was on the keto diet last, I tried it out. So everything that I bring to my population in the gym, I try it out first. I'm not one of those guys like, okay, so try this and then if it will, I do it. Right, my team, we experiment on ourselves first. When I bring you, I bring you an experience. Right, um, the keto diet is 70% fat. If this is your fist of protein, and I say two tablespoons of fat, that's not 70% fat. So the keto diet is very high in fat, mm -hmm. and lower in protein, and almost little to no carbohydrates. Carbohydrates that you would have on the keto diet is only green, leafy stuff, nothing starchy. The only fruits that you probably would be allowed might be definitely blueberries and um, yes. but oranges, bananas, apples, mm -hmm. not at all. And I what? wonder if there's different types of keto, like there's one that's very strict, there's another one that they call like dirty keto or something like that. Yeah. You know, really know what doing. That's you know, for me, I think I think people try to take whatever is out here. And conform it mm -hmm. to yeah. how you know, yeah. it's, it's, you know, how society is. We do all that stuff sometimes. Like we have double standards, basically. Like I want to make this. I want to do this, but I want to do it in my way. Mm -hmm. And then something happens. No, don't get me wrong. Things have evolved out of those type of modifications. Um, the keto diet, it's very restrictive. If you like cheese and nuts and butters and all of that, it'll fit you. But I wouldn't recommend it all the time. I have one client now on a keto diet, and um, he's been with me. We went through the low carb phase. We're on a keto phase, he's getting ready for vacation. He's trying to get as lean as possible. And I know that when he goes on vacation, he might back off of his diet and have like, you know, vacation food. So the keto diet is preparing him for when he overloads, he doesn't come back mm -hmm. to where he started before. You kind of get it? Yeah. All right? It's kind of similar to what we do in um, bodybuilding. We have that type of restriction for three months. And um, then when you compete, your muscles just go back. You gain like about 20 pounds in one day. Fast. All right? Um, go ahead. Um, if you get a chance to show the other um, um, members the pictures, but how often are you exercising to, to, like, you to know, achieve like, that? Yeah. <coughs> Are you in the gym like seven days a week? Are you in the gym? Like All right. This girl here, right? Carly, 22 years old at the time I was training her. Six foot one, German chick. Um, strong as an ox. I gave her everything. I designed a three week program. And eight weeks in, I'm like, listen, you're getting stronger, but you're not getting ready. You're not going to be ready for this thing. And then she started crying, oh my gosh, I've been drinking and partying. I'm like, oh man, you can't last that. You're going to be wearing my name, you got to make sure that you get us in right. Mm -hmm. So for the last six weeks, she literally beat herself up. She was to the point where she had to walk around with pepper spray because she was leaving home four o'clock in the morning to run. She would run for an hour. Mm -hmm. And then come back in and go to work and then train with me and then run at night for six weeks straight. She started getting stress fractures in her foot and all of that. She starts and see and she looked good. But imagine if she was doing the right thing from the get-go. So there's always, as I said to you before, it's if you give it a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. then you, you, you want to get to that gradual progression. Most people tend to push too hard for vacation or something, and then you just mm -hmm. go all the way back. All right? Um, so in terms of, it, to answer your question, she's not a good yeah, example. Yeah. Right? Neither is her. She's not a good example either. I mean, she was more uh, level. Um, she was a group exercise instructor. We had a very hard time with her losing fat because all she does all day is exercise. The body adapts. 
right? So guys who get big lift heavy. People who perform endurance activities tend to adapt to endurance activities. So if you look at a sprinter, they're tight. If you look at a marathon runner, they're not so tight, they're small. But the body type is different. So the adaptation to the sport is to produce fat for energy, right? So she, as a group X instructor, working all day in the fitness field, her fat, she needed her fat for a job. So her body fat was an adaptive response to the work she was doing. Mm -hmm. So we had a very hard time with her coming down. Um, Eve, better example. She worked with me two days a week, and she did two other days a week in her own. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very gettable, all right? Um, uh, Jalissa, Jalissa, all right? Um, I still talk to her, I still train her, I still train her brother. Uh, two days a week with me, and then three days a week in the gym. And um, she was she was awesome, like she would jump in the scale every week and be like four or five pounds down. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, Andrea, my office, my first gym was a basement. I wish it was pretty like this, I probably would have stayed here. <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling was like this, so I couldn't stretch my arms up, right? I had to do like this to put my hands over my head. It was, I would say, 22 feet from this wall to where that door is, and just a person, real small, little office. When she came in, she came in with a friend, a friend of an older client of mine. She's like, I have a friend that I want to help. She brings Andrea in, and literally, Andrea didn't fit between the door and my desk to get inside the basement. She did not fit. And um, her friend called me, she's like, Jay, you should rethink your office. And I, re, you know, kind of moved her on my table. And she came in, and she kept going, and she kept going, and now she lost, she got even skinnier than the girl who brought her in. Mm. Right, she just went all out and um, the strategies were simple. You see, when you have that much weight to lose, it doesn't take a big change. Little changes, boom. You cut out a bit of sugar in the morning, you jump on the scale like, oh, this thing is working. You go outside, you walk around a little bit, like, man, you start losing weight. And all of a sudden, she was, she was flying. Then I started uh, really uh, kicking her butt. Being nice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so what right? about the skin? He had to have surgery, like she was really. No, and you, as you can see right now, right? Look at. Oh, let me use my pointer. Oh, yeah. Look at her waistline. She, yeah. she didn't have any rules at all. All right? She didn't have any excess fat around her stomach. Um, yeah, she still has some weight to lose. But I mean, when you compare that to that, she's like, I've been right here. She took me to, uh, she invited me to a wedding and she called me, but she was like crying. Ugh. And I'm like embarrassed. Like, yeah. And I had a line of women uh, signed up right after, giving me their numbers and all this stuff. But um, she didn't have to do much uh, surgery. She didn't do any surgery at all, sorry. Um, as you could tell by your stomach, you could tell the shirt is tight, she's sweating, mm -hmm. and there's nothing, there's nothing there. Really? Yeah. You can tighten up the stomach, the skin, and... Well, that's a different topic. There's something called autophagy. It's a phenomenon where the body does, the body recycles. So just as how we recycle plastic bottles and paper and all that crap, the body has something, a process that recycles excess skin, mm -hmm. right? Now, to get an autophagy, it's, it's just a whole thing, but Long story short, it requires fasting. And when I say fasting, fasting, 24 hour fasting. So you start doing the 24 hour fasting, the body starts removing some of the excess collagen and elastin that you don't need anymore. And people, I have seen pictures and seen research with people who had, who were thinking about surgery and fasting and the body recycled all those excess uh, uh, rollers of skin. It's, 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 it's really crazy. Like, mm -hmm. where I, what I read and where I read and who I listen to and all that stuff, it's, it's really next level stuff. That's why I didn't bring you guys anything about vitamin E and vitamin K. When you focus too much on the micro stuff, you miss the whole picture, mm -hmm. right? If you don't eat processed foods, 
and you don't, uh, 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 you eat whole foods and you grocery shop on the outside of the supermarket and mm-hmm. you avoid the aisles on the inside. You don't have to worry about the microbes. The microbes might show up as a deficiency sometimes in your blood work and then you might get a fix with the microbe. Right? But when you focus on this, this vitamin is good for this. It's too much information. And it's not usable, it's not actionable. Not one time. This stuff here is guidelines. This is why I use this, why I teach. Right? It's guidelines, use it, we put it together. Um, and a lot of this stuff in there is really tough because when I put things together, I put things together optimally. I don't think what's well, okay, well, this is gonna work okay, no. This is gonna work right here. And then clients tend to water it down a little bit. Just like she said with the dirty keto thing. So if I give you something that's real strict and you water it down a little bit, it's still gonna be close to the top. But if I water this down and you come and water it down again, mm-hmm. then we end up with nothing. Mm-hmm. Right? So we have a uh, Again, I'm gonna go all the way down. And these little things here are gonna be what you're gonna to use to move around. Now by all means, this is not uh, conclusive. I just hope tonight that I opened up your minds a little more to the big picture and not focus on the small stuff. All right? Um, then you can look at it. The nutrition program companion it's a little more technical, it's simple. And that girl at the top, the German girl, she, when I give her a program, she made this for me. And I'm like, this is brilliant. And uh, she color coded proteins, fats, and carbohydrates, and what a cup of this should be. And she numbers, just put all the numbers together. But look at it, look at it, look at it. And then, you know, for me, when I'm taking the material, I listen to something more than once. I read it more than once. You got to. You have too much distractions and brains in like a million different places. So look at all this stuff. Read it again while you're train, whoever takes the train. Download it on your phone and take a read and take a read and take a read. It's gonna stick. You know, I, I read. I consume about four books a month. And my thing is if I could take one or two things out of each book, I'm good. So if you guys could take a couple things out of this talk tonight, mm-hmm. you're winning. Right? I said, the one thing that you guys have to change is what? The one thing. The one thing, if you were to take one thing out of the stock tonight, what would it be? I said it at the beginning. Oh boy, we're going to start doing push ups. <laughs> we're going to start doing push ups right now, man. What would it be in the beginning? All right, okay. All right. What would it be in the beginning? Let me eat cock for breakfast. Ah, I love it. What did you say? What did she say? Let me eat cock for breakfast. No carbs Don't eat carbs for breakfast? Yeah, no carbs for breakfast. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 What? All right. She got it. Look at no that. No toast, no oatmeal? <laughs> oatmeal is probably. On a Sunday, yeah, when you're home doing nothing, you can treat yourself a little bit. No, oatmeal is. Right. So what what would be an ideal breakfast then? Yeah. An ideal breakfast. Oh my I'm god. <laughs> what did you I, say? I, I usually do when I have time. What do you think? Yeah, eggs yeah. and avocado. It's an avocado. It's an avocado. Scramble it, get some avocado. Or you could even, if you want to do, I don't like doing egg whites. It's, it's, it's like eating a cereal box. But if you want to do egg whites, you add like a spoon of almond butter or cashew butter with it. So you get your proteins and your fats. Alright? Wait, so you're really telling me I can't have cereal for breakfast? Cereal? That's not healthy. That's not you can't. Real quick before I leave. All right, I'll give you one little thing here, all right? Listen to this. There was a study, a research, that had three kids, two groups of kids. One group was fed carbohydrates only. One group was fed protein and carbohydrates. And the other group was fed proteins and fats. They tested their IQ. The carbohydrate only group failed. Next day, they switch it around. The carbohydrate only group scored the lowest again. The third day, they switch it around again. And like the first day, the carbohydrate only group scored the lowest. Does this tell you why? Carbohydrates uh, uh, stimulate the production of serotonin. Serotonin puts you to sleep. Mm-hmm. We're taking your kids and you're sending them to school in the morning. They, they were sleeping all night. Mm-hmm. Now you send them and you want them to learn. Mm-hmm. And you put them back to sleep and then send them to school. Mm-hmm. 
Sing what yeah. else? I said heavy stuff right there. Yeah. Heavy stuff. Wow. All right, guys, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was awesome.